Hi there, and welcome to Ian's NGATE channel. I'm Ian. In this video, I'm going to review the Rapido Trains Conflat P Wagon Triple Pack. The Conflat P Wagon was designed for the introduction of the Anglo Scottish Condor Freight Service in 1959 that ran between London and Glasgow. Each wagon could carry one Type A and one Type BD container and the service could be seen hauled by a Class 28 Metrovic diesel, which of course Rapido make an N-gauge model of. When the Condor service was withdrawn in 1965, the Conflat P wagons were rebuilt as timber wagons and were a common sight in Scotland until they were withdrawn in 1981. Rapido trains have released the wagons both singly and in triple packs, meaning that there are plenty of unique running numbers available. I'm reviewing Triple Pack C, which has product code 921018. Inside the sturdy cardboard box, the wagons are encased in three layers of foam, the middle layer having cutouts for the wagons. The box also contains an accessory pack containing a range of detail parts, although there are no instructions to tell you where to fit them. In fact, there is no paperwork in the box at all. Each wagon comes with a small Type A and a larger Type BD container. The containers are very nicely detailed and are very colourful, coming in bauxite and crimson. The paint has been very well applied and the tiny wording on the containers is lovely and crisp, with even the tiniest of the lettering being legible under a macro lens. The panels and doors of the containers are well moulded with individual wooden planks, door hinges and handles, mounting hooks and rivets all being present. I'm not sure whether the containers are supposed to be removable, but they easily become detached from the wagon. Unfortunately, once detached, there were visible glue marks that would need to be cleaned up. The Conflat wagon itself has some fine chassis details, with axle boxes being picked out in yellow and the brake handle being picked out in white. The wagon sole bars are of a similar high standard as the containers, with paint being well applied and running number and other markings being clearly visible and legible under magnification. Looking down on the wagon, we can see the various struts and spars that have been modelled and that are used to hold the containers. However, we can also see the holes and glue marks used to keep the model containers in place, so maybe the containers are supposed to remain on the wagon. Underneath the wagon, there are also details including rods, pipes, brake rigging and an air cylinder. The wagon is fitted with metal wheels and NEM pockets which have Rapido couplers fitted as standard. However, the couplers are held in place by a small screw, which doesn't look very prototypical. Which begs the question, why go to the trouble of trying to make the rest of the underframe look more authentic and not hide the screw? Weirdly, details include a frame that seems to hold the brake pads in place, but which also traps the wheels in their axle boxes, meaning you can't easily remove them. We'll come back to that later. Before performing some running tests, I weighed the wagon and containers individually. The Type A container weighed in at 5 grams. The Type BD container weighed in at a massive 16 grams. And the wagon itself weighed in at only 3 grams. That's a total of 24 grams, which is a huge amount of weight for a single wagon. And I wondered how many locos would be able to pull a decent sized rake of them. While the 24 gram total was huge, the 3 grams of the wagon itself wasn't much at all and I wondered if maybe the distribution of weight between the pieces could have been more balanced. So here's the small rake of wagons, along with a triplet of Graham Farish Conflats running around my test track with a Graham Farish brake van, all being hauled by my Dapple Class 33. It quickly became obvious that the Rapido trains wagons were not running smoothly. Upon closer inspection, it was found that none of the Conflat P wagon wheels were completely free running in their axle boxes. The back to back of the wheels was comparable to my other wagons, so that wasn't the problem. So I planned to remove the wheels to determine if there was an obstruction, which is when I ran into the problem with the axles being trapped by the underframe detail. Initially, I thought that the frame below the wheels was being held in place by the small screw, but it wasn't, as this just released the NEM pocket and coupler. Unfortunately, I couldn't work out how to remove the wheels without causing damage to the frame. I eventually got the wheels running more freely by gently pulling the axle boxes apart to widen the chassis slightly at that point, and while this worked, I don't expect it to be a long-term solution. Talking of damage, 
While I was trying to free the wheels, I managed to break a plastic bar that was part of the chassis detail, and also a buffer fell off. These are obviously both pretty easy fixes, with a spot of glue, but why am I having to try fixing things on a brand new model? I tried running the Conflac P wagons again, and they obviously ran much better once their wheels had been freed. But how would they run without their containers? I was very sceptical that such light wagons would stay on track, especially over the points and around the tight second radius curve of my test track. However, they really surprised me and ran really well. They also looked pretty good too. To test the couplers of the wagons, I tried coupling them with a variety of rolling stock from other manufacturers, including a Dapple Dogfish Wagon, a Graham Farish Brake Van, a Pico Ferry Wagon, a Revolution Trains Tank Wagon, and an N-Gage Society Ferry Van and didn't encounter any problems other than once with the Dapple Dogfish Wagon. I purchased my triple pack at the Great Electric Train Show for the bargain price of £68, but while the RRP is around £88, they're currently retailing for around the £78 mark. At £78, that's £26 per wagon, which is around about the going rate for a detailed N-Gage wagon at the moment. In summary, I think that the model looks brilliant, and really stands out amongst my other rolling stock. However, as you've seen, there have been problems. Should the containers detach from the wagons? If not, then obviously that's a build quality issue. To be honest, I actually like that the containers can be removed, but once their weight is no longer acting on the axles, they're really light, and while during my short test I didn't have any problems, I have in the past experienced problems with very light wagons. And that brings us to the problem with the wheels being too tight, and the issue I encountered with not being able to remove them. Straight out of the box, owning these wagons has been a poor experience. I really want to love them, but find it difficult to recommend them, unless you're willing to start modifying them as soon as they're out of the box. Maybe I was just unlucky with my triple pack, but for all three wagons to have issues, I don't think so. The bottom line is that I purchase ready-to-run models because I want to run them straight out of the box. Otherwise, I'd purchase a kit at a fraction of the cost. OK, so that's about it for this review. Have you got any of these Rapido Trains Conflat P wagons? Has your experience been similar to mine? Hopefully it's been a lot better. Please let me know in the comments section. In the meantime, thanks ever so much for watching. Hopefully there'll be another review along soon. Bye.